Hello and welcome back to The Note. Let's talk about the oil market today. Obviously the recent shocking successes of the uh, insurrection in Iraq have come as a great surprise, but you really wouldn't be able to tell that so far from what the oil market has been doing. It's taken these developments remarkably calmly. Why? With me now to answer that is our commodities editor, Neil Hume. Neil, thanks very much for joining me today. Let's start by taking a look at volatility in the oil market, and it's been remarkably calm, remarkably steady reduction over the last few years. What's been going on to keep people so calm about the oil market? Well, I mean, I think you could just look at that graphic and really say it's the US shale revolution. Right. What's happened is we've seen an explosion, massive supply coming out of the US, a million barrels um, a day for the last each of the last three years. And that's really offset any other outages you might see in OPEC or non-OPEC countries. So the market has remained in balance, supply and demand pretty much equal. Um, you've just seen volatility come out and flat right. prices. So the price for the last three years has been between 105 and 110 without really much exception. So as far as the oil price is concerned, shale has been a powerful analgesic. It's kept everybody calm. Indeed. Now let's take a look at the oil price itself. And you know, there's been a lot of publicity correctly that the oil price has gone up quite a bit since the events in Iraq. But in context, you could barely tell yeah. that anything's happened as far as I can see. Well, how have we managed to stay in this range despite quite such shocking news? Well, so it's a $5 move, and I think the, the view in the marketplace is twofold, really. First of all, we haven't actually lost any exports as a result of what we've seen in well, Iraq so well, far. Well, yet. Yet. Right. So uh, there were some exports coming out of the north earlier in the year, but then the pipeline was blown up by the insurgents in mm. March. So we haven't lost those exports. Right. And the rest of Iraqi production, sort of 90% of it, is down in the south. Now, that's hundreds and hundreds of kilometres from the fighting at the moment. Right. So the market is making the assumption that the uh, insurgents won't get past Baghdad, which is a Shia-dominated area, and affect production in any of those areas. So they're saying production will continue, exports will keep going. OK, now that sounds like a reasonable baseline scenario for me because we all know how much is at stake, but is it really sensible to put so little extra risk into the price? I mean, this is really not really not pricing any significant probability that that's happen, going to happen. It's no, and, and the market is very, very tight at the moment. Um, what we've seen, because of a lot of outages in OPEC and non-OPEC countries, the IEA, that's the mm. uh, International Energy Agency, says that those countries need to pump an extra million barrels a day for the rest of the year. Where is this supply going to come from? That's a good question. Saudi Arabia does have lots of spare capacity. But if, for example, for the sake of argument, Baghdad were to fall, the government were to completely collapse, and oil experts, exports in the, you know, the, the southern half of the country were infected by half, where is the rest of that supply going to come from? There are stocks in the developed world that could be drawn down, but that price is not reflecting the risk that um, we would have to find another couple of million barrels of oil from somewhere. But even further than that, I mean, longer term, aren't there a lot of hopes that Iraq is going to account for a huge chunk of growth in oil supply over the next four or five years as well. Yes, I mean, Iraq is key to production growth going forward. So I think the IEA again say that 45% of expected global oil growth is going to come from the country uh, between now and the end of the decade. 45%? 45%. 45 and yet we're having oil majors actually pulling their staff out, reducing to skeleton yep. staff, which presumably is already making it a foregone conclusion that we're not going to get quite as much extra production as people have budgeted. Indeed, and forecasters are already looking at their production forecast for Iraq to out to 2020 and cutting it. The country thinks they'll do 8 million barrels. Some of the forecasters I'm talking to are looking at four, perhaps even three and a half. They don't see that growth coming through. And when you've got people like BP cutting 20% of their staff in the country, OK, they might still be able to run a field on a skeleton staff, but are they developing anything? Are they exploring? Are they developing the wells? The answer to that's probably no. So the outlook does look. Uh, for oil prices at least, from this you know, very yeah. difficult situation, bullish, but although the market has yet to reflect that. Okay, Neil, thank you very much indeed. Okay, what has happened so far is in the price, but the risks are very, very firmly asymmetrically to the upside.